What's up guys, Mike Thomas, aka The Young Trishley here. Today I wanted to talk about side decking, specifically side decking in Dragon Link. A lot of you guys have asked me to make this video, so I figured it is about time we make the video. Let's hop on over to Dueling Book and open up my Dragon deck list. This is the list that I played for the YCS this past weekend. Unfortunately, we were not able to top the YCS. Our losses were ones I don't really think were preventable. I just don't think it was our day to win. So this list should be a pretty good approximation if you are looking for a pure Dragon Link deck list that you just want to try out. I think this list is pretty solid and this is the deck list that i'm going to be using as a baseline for this siding guide so this is this is how i sided with the deck and you know you can if you want to play this exact list you can just go ahead and borrow these exact siding patterns or you can kind of use what i talk about in this video and apply that to your own list you know every list is unique so before we start talking about siding i just want to talk about a little bit of deck building philosophy with this dragon link deck with the pure dragon link deck unlike the brave version of dragon link which has to accommodate an eight card brave engine plus you know like a three card rose engine and all these other cards the pure version of Dragon Link has a lot of space to play defensive cards. As you see, we play 11 of them plus a Psyframe Driver. So this list is already very defensive heavy. So that gives you actually a little bit of flexibility in your side patterns because instead of having to take out engine pieces to side, a lot of the times you can take out defensive cards and just swap which defensive cards you want in which matchup. That said, you do sometimes take out engine cards in the deck and we will get into that that because how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through a few of the most common matchups I think you'll encounter in the current meta game, and I'm basing this partly off of results from the YCS and partly off of just you know what I was expecting going into the tournament. I'm gonna start this off by talking about the deck that ended up winning the YCS being the based strategy or a variant of it. When I'm thinking about decks like based or based variants, usually I'm looking at siding in cards like Token Collector and Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet I don't think is actually that good against based, but against some variants of base, such as the Synchro Tenyi deck, uh, which personally I would just categorize as being a similar deck. I think it's pretty strong, and when combined with another hand trap or multiple other hand traps, Droplet can actually end up being very impactful against these decks. The way I would look at it as you would use your defensive cards on their turn to kind of lower the impact of their board. Maybe they're not setting up, you know, the full board with like Baron, Herald, DPE, and Scythe, but maybe they are just ending on a fraction of that, and then you can use Droplet to interact with whatever they have left. So I don't think Droplet is terrible. I think that this particular side deck doesn't have a great time siding into based. If you saw my other video on Draw and Lockbird, I think that card's a lot better against those decks. So if you are playing Draw and Lockbird instead of these Forbidden Droplets, you could just consider that Draw and Lockbird. However, for the YCS, I realized that my deck list did not have many cards that were good against Prankid, so I switched out the draws at the last minute. Now, with all that said, these are the five cards that I think you would probably want the most out of this side deck going into those matchups. So Token Collector obviously being good. Now the cards that I'm going to take out for this matchup are actually engine pieces because in my mind I actually want to see almost all of these defensive cards against based or based variants. I want to give myself as much of a fighting chance as possible because dealing with a scythe lock or whatever crazy board they set up is usually a little bit too much so I want to guarantee that I'm opening not one defensive card but two and then hoping that I'm going to be able to play through that from there. So usually the cards that I would take out is I'd usually take out one Nocto, one Abso Router, one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, one Galactic Spiral Dragon, and one Destrudo the Lost Dragon's Frisian. Now, of course, if you are going first against these decks, more so against the the Synchro Tenyi versions of the deck, I think you can put in Lancia. You can kind of struggle to break boards through a Lancia. Maybe take out a Nib, a Valor, and a Ghost Ogre, for example, or just switching cards like taking out the Ghost Ogres completely, though it really depends on you know how you're seeing them play the deck. 
Now against the deck like Phantom Knight, which is another popular strategy that also happens to take advantage of Scythe or Scy Scythe Locks and is another deck that at least at the start of the format was kind of public enemy number one. What I would side in in that matchup is I would put in the three Lancias and the three Droplets. Now, if I were not playing Droplet, I would just put in the three Lancia, but because this list is playing Droplet, I would put in both. And against Phantom Knight, I personally like to take out the Ghost Ogres. I think Ghost Ogre is just okay against Phantom Knight. I think it really only stops the brave part of the deck. It can punish a Cherubini if your opponent does not play around it correctly. However, I think Ghost Ogre really only punishes your opponent if they have the brave cards, and if they don't have the brave cards, then I think you are totally fine. And if they're, if they're using their Cherubini to dump the Brave cards, I think that either they opened Insane, where this Ghost Ogre is probably not going to help you out too much, or they didn't open up that great anyway, in which case you probably don't need the Ghost Ogre anyway. And I'd much rather see like a combination of Nibiru plus Valor against the deck, or something like a Lancia plus, say, a Valor. So we would take out the Ghost Ogres. And then in this matchup, I also take out one Nocto, one Abso Router, one Red MD, and one Galactic Spiral. The reason we take out these four are because we obviously don't want to be summoning Zombie Vampire against Phantom Knight, giving them potential mills, so Galactic Spiral is not usually that good of an extender. It's like a more restrictive Distrudo at this point, and going second, we don't really need that. Red MD, we're not trying to set up a board, and they've probably sided in Lancia, so probably not the best card. And then one Absa Router, one Nocto are just duplicate engine pieces, so we can just freely take those out. And then we have all of these defensive cards that are going to potentially help us against the deck and seeing just about any of these can usually protect us but the reason i like to keep these in is because they combo very well with nibiru when they do have the brave engine and then if they don't have the brave engine you can save them in order to combat the dpe or the scythe part of the deck you can counter the scarier parts of the deck now for the next deck i want to talk about is flun is Fluanderies. Fluanderies is a deck that is not usually a deck that you would expect to see too much of at a high level of competitive play. Though Hanko Chow did manage to take Fluanderies to the top four of the YCS, so it is a deck that you do have to respect, and I'm glad that I did make the decision to respect the deck because if I had gone that distance and had to play against a player like Hanko, I'm very glad that I had side deck preparation for the Fluanderies strategy. Strategy. Now for the Flu Andres deck, I would put in the three lightning storms, the three droplets, and a red reboot against their deck. So the lightning storms obviously can clear either back row or monsters since all of their monsters have to be put in attack mode. Droplets obviously outs the barrier statue and the empen, and then red reboot would clear any floodgates or the dreaming town. All always nice to have answers to those. And what we would be taking out in that matchup is we'd be taking out the three Nibirus. Usually, usually you can't get Nibiru to resolve. I've seen Nibiru be resolved against Flunder before, but personally I just don't think it's worth it to keep it in. I like to take out the two Ghost Ogres. Even though the Ghost Ogre does hit the field spell, there's no guarantee that they do have the field spell. So I think Ghost Ogre is just not the most consistent hand trap that we could be playing. If you aren't playing cards like Valor, you can of course keep this card in. It's, it is a viable hand trap in the matchup. It's just not necessarily the best one. And then I also take out one copy of Absa Router and one Red MD. For those wondering why I would not put an Artifact Lancia, I don't think Artifact Lancia really hinders the deck from playing too much. I think we're a little bit more concerned with their initial setup rather than their follow-up. I think when you go first in this matchup, personally, I put in the Artifact Lancias over the Nibirus. However, when I go second, I don't think it's usually worth it. Now for the Mirror Match. The Dragon Link Mirror Match is kind of an awkward one. It is kind of hard to side for in some ways. In some ways, it's very easy. And it really 
really depends on what variant of the deck they're playing. I think if they're playing the adventure version of the deck, you put in Artifact Lancia for sure. Now, personally, I do side this in against the pure version of the deck as well in this specific list. However, I don't think that Artifact Lancia is always the most impactful card against Dragon Link. I think they are fully capable of playing underneath Artifact Lancia. So I think if you have other hand traps like Draw and Lockbird or something, instead of these Artifact Lancias, uh, you could definitely side those in in the mirror match. Other things that you could consider siding in going second in the mirror match is you can side in the triple tactical talents. Those can occasionally be very good because a lot of times the opponent is incentivized to use seal to bounce your normal summon in the mirror match. So a lot of times using your normal summon can turn on your triple tactical talents. You might be able to use that triple tactical talents to take control of one of your opponent's monsters, use it to simplify the game state, and then proceed from there, or use it as link material since their monsters are also dragons. Another card that you can consider is the Forbidden Droplets to try and negate their ending board, though I'm not sure if this is always necessary because you don't always have the card economy to just be sending cards from your hand to the graveyard with Forbidden Droplet in this deck, and the Mirror Match is a very resource intensive one, so it's not really a card that I would necessarily think of as an automatic side in in the Mirror Match. Personally, the approach I like to take in the Mirror Match is to just try and stop my opponent from setting up anything at all. So for that reason, I just personally put in the three Artifact Lancias, and I take out the three copies of Effect Veiler. Effect Veiler is okay in the Mirror Match, though depending on their hand, it can be a little awkward sometimes. I think this card is still good to hit stuff like Papega and to hit stuff like the Striker Dragon, but I think I'd rather have the Artifact Lancia, especially if they're playing the Adventure version of the deck. If they are just playing the pure version of the deck, I think the Effect Veilers, you could potentially consider keeping in the Effect Veiler, though I think cards like Gamma are better, and I think cards like Ghost Ogre are better. Finally, I want to talk about Adventure Prank Kid, which is the deck that took the most top cut slots at the YCS, and for that, I personally like to put in Forbidden Droplet in that matchup and taking out the Effect Veilers. Effect Veiler not really doing a whole lot in that matchup, but Forbidden Droplet is insanely powerful in that matchup, allowing you to stop the Battle Butler. It allows you to stop a potential DPE. So very powerful card and very good. And then I, of course we keep in the Nibiru's Gamma and Ogre because seeing these in combination will just fully clear their board. And for that reason, I also don't really like Token Collector in the Prank Kid matchup specifically because I think you're a little bit Bit more worried about the battle butler than anything else. I think the adventure cards are more of a distraction than anything else, and Nibiru on its own beats the entire deck. So I've actually, in testing, I've run into situations where I put in token collector against the pranked deck, and of course the only time that you have to use your token collector against them is right at the start before they start comboing. So if you put your token collector on the field against the pranked deck, you clear their token, you're no longer able to activate Nibiru against them and you aren't going to be able to reduce their entire field to rubble so you they are going to be able to play they are going to be able to combo you and it's really that battle butler that i'm afraid of so in this matchup specifically this is a brave matchup where i do not like token collector now all, for all of these matchups that i've been talking about all of these side patterns have been for going second because when you go first i think most of the time nine times out of ten you're usually just going to want to be siding in your triple tactical talents probably reducing reducing your hand trap lineup down a little bit, usually siding out like one of each of your hand traps or something like that. Just because you want to stop your opponent's hand trap, just because you want to punish your opponent for hand trapping you, this is a very hand trap heavy format. And because Dragon Link does have the ability to hand loop the opponent with Levianir, having triple tactical talents when you go first is always powerful, no matter what deck you're playing against. Because if they hand trap you even one time, then they are now down three cards if you are able to get to that levy in air. So being able to look at their hand, clear a card, rip a card with levy is very strong. And personally, the way I like to play tactics as well is to hold it as long as possible and really punish the opponent. So like I will sometimes I'll willingly walk into extra hand traps just so that my opponent can hand loop themselves for more cards. So I think tactics is really strong against everything. 
though if you are playing against a deck that does not play hand traps then tactics is not that good as a further note too for when you go first that's usually when stuff like token collector would come in usually substituting out like a nibiru and a valor or something of the sort just subbing out for other defensive cards that you're already playing in relevant matchups because it's a card that you can mill off of chaos ruler it's a card you can mill off of zombie vampire and it gets value same thing with artifact lancia in relevant matchups you would put these cards in and just trade out the defensive cards say for example you're playing against a synchro tenyi deck and you're going first you've taken out one of each of your hand traps for these triple tactical talents you could for example put in two copies of lancia and a token collector going first you could put in two copies of token collector one lancia you could just put in the two copies of token collector and say for example maybe you want to take out all three of your valors and both of your ghost ogres and just keep in all of your nibirus really this kind of comes down to a point where it's like what have you seen out of your opponent's deck and which defensive cards do you think would be better going first but the side deck is really in a place that when you're siding for going first with your defense with your hand traps you can kind of change out any of your hand traps for one another when you go first and just try and tailor it to the opponent's deck as best as possible but a lot of the time it's really just going to be these three triple tactical talents that we're putting in when we go first anyway guys that's all i have for you on this video if you did find this useful if you did find this helpful go ahead and drop this video a like and leave me a comment telling me so let me know if you would like to see any other siding guides for other decks in the meta game right now um, i know that this was kind of contained to the pure dragon link deck and i know that the adventure version of the deck is also popular so if you would like to see a guide for a side pattern on adventure dragon link let me know in the comments otherwise that's all i have for you guys today so i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video